Hi folks, welcome to the Yesophone channel and uh, thanks for tuning in. In this particular episode I want to discuss whether you should buy a color or a mono camera for your astrophotography hobby. So without further ado, let's get into it. My ZWO ASI 1600 Mono Pro. Uh, first, we have to talk about the camera sensor. So, the camera sensor, just like any other camera, it has a lot of light capturing wells. And um, of course, these capturing wells they enable the camera sensor to capture the photons that come from our deep space objects. So, those photons they have traveled for, for, uh, for many light years basically, and then they fall onto your camera sensor. And then uh, the camera sensor also has analog to digital converters, where, which are able to convert the analog signal, so the light basically, the analog light that comes from deep space, it can convert it to a digital signal which will appear as a pixel in uh, your digital image basically. And what is important to say is that uh, the higher the bits are of your ADC, so you have maybe a 10 bit or a 12 bit or a 14 bit or a 16 bit, ADC in your camera sensor, um, the higher the bits, the more variations your camera is able to detect in between the completely black point of your uh, image and the completely white point of your image. But most importantly, of course, this mono camera, it cannot distinguish between uh, the different colors of light that fall on the camera sensor. So we need uh, a filter uh, or several filters actually that can distinguish between the different colors of light that we want to capture. So let's talk about that next. Question of the day. What kind of camera are you using for your astrophotography? A color camera, a mono camera or perhaps both depending on the objects that you want to uh, image. Please let me know in the comment section down below so we can get into a conversation and share our experiences. I always like that. And with that, let's move on with the video. So how can we detect the different colors of light while using also a mono camera? And uh, yeah, the answer to that is that uh, amateur astrophotographers, they use filters. So uh, you probably know that different colors of light travel at a different wavelengths within the light spectrum. So for instance, uh, blue light travels in between 450 and 485 nanometers. And uh, green, it uh, travels in between 500 and 565 nanometers. And red travels in between 624 to 740 nanometers, basically. So uh, let's take a blue filter. So what this filter does is uh, it will pass photons that will travel specifically in between the 450 and 485 nanometer range while rejecting photons that travel at uh, different wavelengths. So uh, by putting a blue filter in front of our mono camera, we then actually know that uh, we are only capturing blue light. And um, yeah, just to show you how I work, um, I'm using uh, an 8 position filter wheel here. This is the ZWO 8 position filter wheel. And your camera, you can put it uh, in front of uh, a specific filter, for instance a blue filter. And then when you are capturing the photons with your camera and you use the blue filter, you know that you are only capturing blue light. Uh, so yeah, that's basically how it works. And uh, this allows uh, amateur astrophotographers to separately capture different parts of the light spectrum, so red, green and blue. We have also narrow band filters. There are a lot of uh, so-called emission nebula out there, so the Horsehead Nebula, the Orion Nebula, the North America Nebula, the Pelican Nebula and so on. Uh, they uh, transmit a lot of ionized hydrogen and ionized hydrogen is an element that uh, is, is transmitted at a very specific wavelength, so the 656 nanometer wavelength. And uh, then you can use, for instance, a hydrogen alpha filter that can only capture that particular part of the light spectrum while rejecting all of the other uh, photons, basically. So you will get a very high signal to noise ratio and you can actually capture that specific element in your deep sky object picture. And the same goes for sulfur and oxygen. These uh, three narrowband filters are often used and you can also combine those uh, different uh, elements into one overall picture 
Uh, and this is also called a Hubble palette picture. If you're interested in those kind of pictures, check out Chuck's astrophotography channel. Uh, I'm also a fan of the Hubble palette, but he's really the master in uh, combining uh, narrowband uh, images into a beautiful overall pictures, narrowband pictures of deep sky objects. So let's move on to uh, imaging with a color camera. And actually I started out just using a DSLR camera for my astrophotography. So I have my Canon 1200D right here. Um, in the United States it's called uh, the Canon Rebel T5. We also have dedicated color cameras. So this is the CWO ASI 178, I think, yeah. Uh, 178 MC Cool. So this is a color camera that you can use. And basically, yeah, these, these color cameras, they work uh, almost similar to mono cameras. Uh, but of course the main difference is that it immediately produces a colored picture of your deep sky object. So a Bayer filter or a Bayer filter it usually has this 2x2 two two pattern of one red filter, one blue filter and two green filters that are put in front of uh, individual cap light capturing wells. And the main idea behind this is, is that our human eyes, our human physiology is more sensitive to green light. So in order to represent a picture that actually rep uh, also matches what we can visually detect with our own human eyes, uh, this is why we have two green filters and one red and one blue filter in a Bayer matrix, basically. Um, so let's, let's think this through. So what happens is that all of the photons from our deep sky object, they fall onto the camera sensor. But of course, um, yeah, depending on the wavelengths with, with which those photons travel, they will either uh, be registered or not be registered. For instance, when you are a red photon and you will hit a green filter of the Bayer matrix, uh, of course you will not get registered. But when as a red photon you will hit the red part, a red filter in the Bayer matrix, then you will get registered. And then actually, um, yeah, the Bayer matrix and also the camera, it has of course uh, some automatic algorithm uh, with which you can combine, for instance, four capturing wells. So two green, a red and a blue filter. You capture uh, both the intensity of uh, the, the photons you collected with also yeah, the colors that you have detected. And then you can come up with uh, all the, an intensity and a color for one pixel that is within your digital image. I hope uh, uh, this makes sense uh, basically. But then of course every pixel can have a color and an intensity. And then you end uh, up with uh, a picture that automatically is a colored picture uh, of your deep uh, sky object that you are interested in capturing. Let's talk about the main advantages of using a color camera and I think they are pretty obvious. So first of all, um, the capturing process is a lot easier and it will save you a lot of time. So your camera will just take colored pictures of the deep sky object that you want to image. Um, whereas with the mono camera, you will have to engage in uh, mono imaging where you have to put first a red filter in front of your camera, then a green and then a blue filter. So it will take you three or maybe more time, three times as much time basically to capture all of those different parts of the light spectrum. Um, and also when we talk about uh, post-processing, yeah, post-processing with colored pictures is a lot easier because you just end up with your colored pictures. You will stack them together using your favorite program and then you will uh, go on and post-process uh, that stacked picture into a final image of your deep sky object. Whereas with a mono camera, you will end up with uh, red uh, images, with blue images, with green images. You have to stack those images separately and also uh, integrate those different images to come up with an overall colored picture of your deep sky object. So that makes the post-processing process a lot more complex. Why do astrophotographers engage in mono imaging? So uh, let's talk next about the main advantages of mono imaging. A mono camera is able to capture a lot more of the light of your deep sky object as compared to a color camera. And uh, for that we have to uh, get into a little thought experiment. So let's imagine that we are a blue photon. We have traveled for many light years and then we are confronted with the Bayer matrix in front of your color camera. So let's imagine that we are being captured by a color camera. 
Um, now this Bayer matrix, as I explained, it consists out of an RGGB pattern. So only about 25% of your camera sensor has actually blue filters in front of the light capturing wells, whereas 75% of that same sensor has either a green or a red filter. So when we are hitting that green or that red filter, we will not get registered in any way, so the signal will be lost. So we have to hit that blue filter, so only 25% chance, we have a 25% chance of getting registered. And uh, let's compare that to mono imaging. So when we are the same blue photon, and of course there has to be a blue filter in front of the uh, mono camera se sensor. When we are this blue uh, photo, we will get accepted by the filter so we can pass through the blue filter that is in front of our camera. And then we can just land on any part of the camera sensor and we will always be registered. <laughs> so you can see that in that way a lot more light can be captured with a mono camera as compared to a color camera. And the quantum efficiency basically refers to the efficiency with which your camera can convert uh, a light, so a photon of light into a digital signal. And most of the time the quantum efficiency of mono cameras are higher as compared to the quantum efficiency of color cameras. Always check this out when buying a camera, how high is the quantum efficiency? You want that to be as high as possible. A lot of uh, people who have a color camera they ask can I use filters in front of, the, of my color camera? And uh, for instance, a very popular idea is to put a, a, a narrow band filter in front of your color camera, such as a hydrogen alpha filter. So uh, we are an ionized hydrogen particle in a deep space object. We have traveled for many light years. And now we have this narrow band H alpha filter that sits in front of your color camera. Of course, your hydrogen alpha filter will accept that photon so we can pass through the H alpha filter, but then we are still confronted with a Bayer matrix. So um, you might know that uh, like the hydrogen alpha particle or the photon uh, is in the red part of the light spectrum. So we, uh, we still we will have to hit uh, a red filter in order to get registered. And uh, like I said, we have the RGGB pattern, so we have only about 25% chance of hitting a, a, blue, a red filter uh, and we have a 25% chance then of actually getting registered on the sensor of that color uh, camera. Um, so yeah, these are some of the main advantages uh, which makes it actually worthwhile to engage in mono astrophotography. So what are my final thoughts on this? Should you engage in astrophotography with a color or a mono camera? If you are still learning uh, how to polar align, if you are still learning on how to use capturing software, if you are still learning on how to use PhD2 guiding to accurately take multi-minute pictures of your deep sky objects, I would say um, then in that case you don't need the additional complexity of engaging in your astrophotography hobby using a mono camera. So you will also add a filter wheel, uh, which also will make it more complex and time consuming basically. So uh, I would say when you just start out and you're just starting to learn all the ropes of astrophotography basically, uh, yeah, stick, with a, stick with a color camera. If you have some skills already and you are comfortable in uh, yeah, getting into the next level of astrophotography, um, don't hesitate and uh, just buy a mono camera, buy some filters and you will be completely amazed uh, like, like by the increase in quality you will get um, uh, of your deep sky objects that you are imaging. So hi folks, we're at the end of the video so I hope you got some value out of it. If you did, please consider giving this video a thumbs up, I always appreciate that. And of course, I hope to see you again in one of the other videos that are on my channel. And until then, I want to thank you for watching. Clear skies. Bye bye.